What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the POCO F5 5G and today in this video I'm gonna be talking about this Octavio S and yes, I have said it in the past that the Evolution X ROM has been one of my favorites for various reasons and I'll prove it to you today that why I say that and why you really need a stable ROM to actually really drive it which has basic features working with a lot of stability. Yes, the features and stuff can be done properly, but even the basic things, if they are done proper, your daily driving experience may differ to a huge degree. And let's see today how the tables turn for this particular ROM. Well, this is the Octavio S based on Android 14 and the build date here is 21st November 2023 and I have flashed it. I was actually using it for a long time now and today when I'm shooting this video, it's 25th November. So as you can see, this is the Octavio S version 5. It is an initial build. So I'll give it to this ROM that it is an initial build and most of the things are working great. And if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your POCO A5, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. Just use the latest recovery that is mentioned in the description. First things first, let's talk about the Android version section. It looks really beautiful. It has the Octavius logo right there and it looks really, really cool up close if you're noticing. And we have the Android version showing as Android 14 and the Octavius version again mentioned as 5.0 and the maintainer is KSS Rao. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM and we have the security patch as November 5th, 2023. So that's great to see that we are getting latest security patch right out of the box. We have the stock kernel right here, 5.10 silver core. And here is the build date again, 21st November, 2023. Until date, I haven't received any other update. In the system settings, we still have the gesture settings and stuff. And in here, we will get the quickly open camera. Then we have the navigation mode right here. In the settings of it, we don't have much. We only have this swipe to invoke assistant that should be working. Yeah, it is showing the mic icon, but yeah, right now, as you can see, it has appeared. We have the full screen gestures. We have the left edge, right edge customization right here, but you cannot change the thickness or the length of this build bar. That's how it is as of today. And we have the three button navigation and you can inverse their layout. Let me just go back. We have the one handed mode as well. And I have enabled that it should be working. Let me just re-enable that and yeah, right now, as you can see, it is working fine. We have the lift to check phone. Let me go back. We have the press and hold power button action in here. You can change it to power menu or digital assistant as you're liking. And we have the swipe drag screenshot. Of course, that is working fine. We have the share edit delete option and the capture mode will also appear when it's needed. And there is a prevent ringing option. There is no system updater as of today. And in terms of the stock launcher, yes, you do get two launchers by default here. You have the pixel launcher and the quick step launcher. I have been using the quick step launcher by default because the pixel launcher, which is there, it's just a very old kind of pixel launcher. If you're noticing, this was like Android nine or 10's pixel launcher. So that is how it is. Yes, it has this Google search window and stuff that should be working. But yeah, this is how it looks like. You can use it if you want. It has a little bit more settings, I guess. No, you can disable the sessions over here. That's pretty much it. But yeah, this is a very old kind of launcher. If you want to use it, you can. This is a quick step launcher present by default. If you go into the settings, it's very minimal. And as you can see, I'm using this quick step launcher. In terms of settings, we only have the notification dots, add app icons to the home screen, and we have the allow home screen rotation, and that's pretty much it. And let me just swipe up. This is how the app drawer looks like. Yes, you can search for particular apps, but we cannot even disable the suggestion section. This is just weird. I would love to see a like suggestion disabling option, but that's just simply not there. And you know what else is not there? Well, to the left of the home screen, there is no Google's discover page. So this is very annoying that I cannot get to see my weather and stuff, everything else. And we have this Google search kind of widget and you cannot really move the position of this one. You cannot even disable it and swiping down, of course, will get you to the quick setting panel. By the way, talking about the stock apps, these were mostly the stock apps present in this ROM. I know you might be saying you can install a separate launcher or something like that. Yes, you can in any ROM. That's not a like thing I'm, I'm talking about. I'm just talking the stock things about this ROM. Another con that I have noticed is that the widgets, the Android 14 or 13 widgets, they are simply not working. Like look at this, this battery widget, it's not working, but the clock widgets, I cannot even add them. Let me just show you if I just search clock and if I just try to add this clock widget over here, let's see what happens. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. If I am trying to actually add a third party widget, if I'm trying to add that, let's see. Okay, so you cannot add that either. So in this quick step launcher, this is very annoying thing that we cannot add any widget or stuff like that. It's not supported. So this is a very annoying experience for me at least because I use widgets on a daily basis. And one more thing, 
just notice the animations on this particular launcher it's just laggy yes the whole ui like otherwise in the settings panel and stuff everything is running smooth with 120 hertz but if i just go back just notice that animation i don't know if you can see that with uh, like going back and stuff just notice when i'm going back the animation is simply like 60 hertz that i can say or like it just feels sluggish while going back and stuff while launching apps it just feels sluggish so this is not good this is not a like good experience i would say once you are using the poco f5 on a daily basis with evolution x you will get used to very smooth animations everywhere but here i'm not getting those smooth animations at all now let's talk about some basic features of course the safety net is passing right out of the box that's a relief that the banking apps are working properly over here the drm info shows as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p also the ir blaster works perfectly fine here no need to worry and in terms of the google photos app yes this rom has the pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos feature so that's really nice to see the stock dialer does have the google dialer and you can record calls if you want from here and Volte calling and stuff, everything is working fine. No need to worry about that. I have tried cellular video calling. They are working perfectly fine. Talking about the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like. You can edit and add multiple toggles, but just notice these are the toggles that you can edit and add, but you cannot really add a Wi-Fi or mobile data separate toggle. You only have to use this internet toggle where you can actually disable and enable your mobile data or Wi-Fi from the same place. You don't have separate toggles for that. We also have the screen recorder. Yes, there is the device audio and microphone audio recording feature. Show touches on screen, but you cannot do HEVC recording and stuff like that. We have the data saver, the nightlight, the dark theme, and we have the Google Home controls. You can enable that and you can use your Google Home controls from here. We have the auto rotate, extra dim, do not disturb, the alarm and the airplane mode. And that's pretty much it. And you can add the hotspot toggle and stuff, etc. No worries with those. And we have the brightness slider toggle on the bottom because I have customized it that way. In the power menu, this is how it looks like. If you have enabled advanced reboot, yes, there is the advanced reboot. You can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here if you want. In the network settings, this is how it looks like. We also have the VPN stuff and 5G and stuff like that is working perfectly fine for me. No need to worry about that. In the app settings, yes, there is the cloned apps. And you can use this particular feature to have two accounts for WhatsApp or stuff like that, just like dual apps. There is this flash notification on screen. So let me just show you. This is how it will look whenever you receive a notification and you can change the like flashing color on the screen to green or red or yellow, whatever you want. You can also enable this camera flash if you want to, just like this, as you can see. In the battery settings, we have the thermal profiles and in here we have the thermal profile changing option per app. You can change it to benchmark, browser, camera, dialer, gaming and streaming. And I did change the profiles to benchmark for the benchmarking apps. I'll show you the benchmarks later on. But let's talk about the like battery settings right now. We have the battery percentage enabling option. It will only enable for the status bar and there is no battery temperature seeing option or the battery health kind of seeing option, nothing yet. And we have the Aku battery app. These are all estimated numbers guys, but still I would say, yes, it's a really good battery life that I have been getting. The screen on here, it shows as 11 hours. The screen off here, it shows as five days and two hours. So that's really good amount of standby time. And even the combined use shows as 22 hours. So you can say it's like whole day of usage without any problems you can get with this particular ROM, no issues. The battery performance has been really good, no problems. And in the health settings, for me, the battery health shows as 91% and fast charging and stuff. Everything is working perfectly fine here. No problems whatsoever. This is the history of me charging from 40 to hundred percent. It took about total of 48 minutes to actually do that. In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. We have the media call ring, etc. volume controls. We also have the power app volume control in case you need that. And if you just scroll down, we have the phone ringtone, live caption, etc. modes, vibration and haptics. Then we have the dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, charging sound and vibration. Also, we have the screenshots of the sound. Then we have the clear speaker option as well. And also we have the Dirac, the Mi Audio Dirac. Looks really beautiful. We have the scene mode. Then we have the presets of the headsets and you can choose the headset from right here. I've been using it with the Youth Edition. There is the choose preset option as well. There is a bass reduction, treble reduction, etc. And we also have the enable hi-fi option as well in case you want to use that. Right now I'm connected to this Bluetooth device and here in the volume panel, this is how it looks like. You have to expand the volume panel if you get, want to get the notification volume and stuff like that. But you cannot really change the output device from right here if you're not playing music. And there is also this Viper FX present by default. And if you just go into it, you have to allow your 
permissions and stuff and you can actually have these kind of features if you are an audio nerd you will definitely love this particular feature so yeah you can use this viper fx for android and you can enjoy your audio with this it will make the sounds a little bit louder and more depth to it i guess so you can customize it however you want to there are huge amount of features so this is a plus if you're audio nerd you can definitely try this from i guess in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive brightness in the lock screen we have the use device controls that's for google home controls always showtime info is the always on display and we have the lift to check phone as well and you can enable it if you want to let me just go back we have the wake screen for notification then we have the dark theme as well and you can schedule it and enable it from right here but there is no pitch black kind of option over here i guess and we have the display size and text option you can enable the bold text and stuff they will be working fine we have the night light and you can schedule it change the intensity and stuff like that in the colors i have been using it with boosted and you can change the rgb values over here if you want and there is the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can change it over here and we have the double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up and the per app refresh rate and you can change the per app refresh rate up to 60 and 120 hertz there is no 90 hertz option yet in the wallpapers and styles there are plenty of options for the android 14 clocks as you can notice from here by the way i have been using the stock wallpaper of this rom and in the home screen settings if i go if i go into the change wallpaper section as you can see this is the on device wallpaper and if you go into the live wallpapers we do not have much options only the emoji option is there and there is the styles and stuff like that okay so this is the normal styles let me just go back in the normal wallpapers and styles we have the shortcuts the left and right shortcut of lock screen you can change we have the show notification on the lock screen then we have the more lock screen kind of settings right here we have the octavi lab yes there are customizations in the status bar we have the status bar icon changing option like the headset bluetooth etc kind of icons you can enable or disable we have the show 4g instead of lte show data disabled icon etc we have the notifications right here we have the annoying notification and stuff octavi theming is there but there is nothing and it is an initial build so i cannot complain much we have the volume panel settings but again there is nothing to see it's just empty and we have the navigation mode we have the long press power button toggle torch we have the volume rocker wake then in the gesture settings we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar double tap to sleep on the lock screen it is turned on as you can see i'll just re-enable it in front of your eyes and we have the double tap to check phone double tap to wake on doors and i did that re-enabling thing you will see why later on and we have the power menu right here in here you can enable the advanced reboot and stuff like that we have the lock screen customization in here we have the lock screen charging info that's really good to see and it is working with the lock screen charging info i've seen that working we have the miscellaneous settings right here ignore window secure flags is there unlock high fps in games netflix proof and the unlimited photo storage everything is working fine in the security settings this is how it looks like we have the device controls right here in the settings of it we have the touch fingerprint to unlock option you can disable it if you want to press on the fingerprint then the fingerprint scanner should be working if you want that feature you can disable this option but there is no quick unlock for some reason of course i have added two fingerprints i'll show you that and we have the more security settings right here but there is no app lock yet now talking about locking and unlocking stuff yes there is the double tap to sleep on the status bar that is working now double tap to wake will give you this if you have this particular feature enabled the ambient display kind of and as you can see double tap to wake actually works perfectly fine from the ambient display and double tap to sleep on the lock screen as you just saw i had it enabled but it doesn't work just notice it simply doesn't work even from the status bar if i double tap it doesn't work so yeah i have to leave the device if i want to make it sleep totally or i have to press the power button and yes if i go into the settings then go into the display settings from here if i go into the lock screen settings and here if i enable the always on display i can enable the always on display of course but there is no toggle for that look at this there is no always on display toggle if i go into the edit section of this as you can notice there is no always on display toggle yet so these are the features i need but it's just not present over here as you can see right now the animation of android 14 clocks yes that is working fine enabling the always on display is a hassle pretty much at least as of now when there are other roms available with all of those features now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed yes it's very fast let me try one more time just notice how fast the fingerprint scanner works with locking and unlocking, I never faced any issues in this ROM, so no problems. There is no face unlock yet, but that's fine. As you can see, locking and unlocking, it's just a very smooth experience, no problem so far. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, we are getting the MIUI camera or Leica camera version 5, and it has all the features working perfectly fine, no problems. We have the 0.6x lens, 2x option, and the 1x, everything should be working fine. And even in the portrait mode, the front camera and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. And we have the video settings where you can actually 
shoot up to 1080p and 60fps for the front camera and for the rear camera if you just switch to that you can shoot up to 4k and 60fps in case you want to so yeah this is great that we have all these features working perfectly fine in this particular rom and in the documents mode we have the enhanced feature and there is the pro mode also you can shoot pro mode videos and if you just swipe up there are even more features like the panorama vlog short frame slow motion every feature out there are present over here no need to worry about the camera the stock camera is great it is a like a camera version 5 so no need to worry about it now let's talk performance well overall while daily driving i have seen of course while launching apps these kind of like lags a little bit while i'm launching the apps from the stock launcher yes on the recent panel it's smooth experience but while launching it or just like going home it's just a weird experience as you can see if i just go home i can definitely notice the frame drops and it's just not a pleasant thing to see on a poco f5 with a snapdragon 7 plus gen 2 this is not what you expect with a custom rom even so yeah the performance while daily driving i have seen these stutters and jitters in the like stock launcher it's running at 60 hertz or something like that so that's just not pleasant to see except for that in apps the performance are great like in twitter let me show you the strolling it's just very smooth experience everywhere in twitter and stuff while you have launched it the apps are working perfectly fine so gaming and all should be working fine but while launching it just look somewhere else maybe so except for that i would say here are the antiquan geekbench score with uh, the cpu stress test in case you want to know about the benchmark performance over here on this rom or on this particular build so i would say to conclude this particular rom this is the octavio s latest built on the poco f5 and today is 25th november and as of today i won't recommend you to actually flash this rom because you cannot get Google's Discover feed even to the left of the home screen. You cannot get the widgets working fine. There are animation lags while you launch a particular apps. Yes, I know there is a ROM called Matrix or something like that, the Project Matrix one. But I cannot really risk my daily driving or hamper my daily driving experience right now because I have my only SIM card on the Poco F5 which I use as a daily driver. So I want a really stable experience for this device. So I'll be definitely switching to the Evolution X ROM right now because I know there I'll get frequent updates. There I'll get all the features that I love. Much more baked experience in my opinion. Let me know down there in the comments what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be watching you guys in the next one. Bye now.